Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Recently, I received similar requests from a few of my subscribers to do a video uh, to talk about things to take note of when you plan to buy a property in Malaysia. After that, I dig through all my past videos and I realized, oh my god, I have not really made a video on this specific topic. So today, I would like to share with everyone my thought process when I plan to buy a property in Malaysia, what are the things I would consider and take note of I will outline it step by step and hopefully it could help to serve as a guide for others who may be looking to buy a property soon in Malaysia. If you guys have watched my past videos, I kept repeating to my audience that now is indeed a buyer's market and a great opportune time for people to go out there and buy property in Malaysia, especially so for those who are looking to buy their first dream home or first investment property please take action now if you are eligible to do so supported by such a favorable low interest rate environment coupled with various incentives thrown in by both the government and developers to encourage home ownership among Malaysian. without further ado let's dive into the full details now first no die budget and loan eligibility when planning to buy a property, be it for own stay or investment purpose, first, I would evaluate my current budget and also my loan eligibility. I will call up my regular banker and ask them, hey, how much loan do I still qualify for now if I were to buy my next property? My banker will usually ask me a few important questions such as, how much is my total income monthly versus our total installment monthly? From there, our banker would then be able to assess and estimate how much more loan we could qualify for. Alternatively, you could also find it out on your own via various websites like uh, Property Guru Loan Pre-Approval. Uh, this website would help you to assess your chance of home loan approval for free with up to 99.9 .9 accuracy. Or you can even access this affordability calculator which provide a very basic guideline on how much you might be able to borrow or you may even go to this home loan calculator website where it provides a simple indicator of your monthly home loan repayment. All these three websites, I will list down the website address at the bottom of my video in the description corner. If you are interested to explore further, you can do so after the end of this video. Once we are sure how much loan we could qualify for, Next, we would then have to calculate how much upfront cash we would need to allocate for this purchase by taking into account various important costs which I will spell it out here, especially if I plan to buy from a sub market. First, of course, would be the down payment. Usually would be 10% of the purchase price unless we get a no money down deal. Second would be stamp duty or memorandum of transfer or MOT in short form. It would be range from 1-4% to of the purchase price. In one of my past videos, I did share how to make calculation on MOT. Or you could also download many calculator apps on your smartphone which can help you to automate the calculation. Third would be the stamp duty on SPA which would be ringgit $10 per stamping and fourth stamp duty on loan agreement usually 0.5% of your property loan amount. The item 2 to 4 are usually factored into the legal fees quotation given by the law firm which you solicited or appointed. And fifth would be the agent fees which ranges from minimum 1% to maximum 3% of the purchase price. And lastly would be the mortgage insurance MRTA or MLTA. Usually if you opt for MRTA, you could even factor in the one-time premium into your mortgage loan amount. Of course, if you are buying direct from developer, usually you could save a lot on all these legal fees like on the SPA, stamp duty on loan agreement and some developer even offer to pay for the stamp duty on the MOT for your purchase like uh, those HOC project which is currently available in the market. And lastly, you could also save on agent fees if you to buy direct from developer. Okay, second, property hunting. Once I've got this figured out, we will then start hunting for our next property. I like to check our website like muda.com, property guru and etc. And also go through our regular property agent who has been with us for a long time. We would inform all our regular agents that we are now looking for our next 
uh, investment property, we let them know the type of property we are looking for, with, uh, whether it be landed or high rise and what is our budget range. And if they found a suitable match, they would then directly propose to me. Sometimes I would also drive around the housing estate which I am I, especially landed, to see if there are any owner listing display outside the property for sale. Check property viewing. We would then make arrangement to view the property. Once we have viewed the property, things I would take note of are first, I would double confirm with the agent if this property is indeed of a freehold or leasehold title. Mind you, there are many agents out there who commonly make mistakes in this area. It could be, of course, due to the property owner giving out wrong info to, to this agent and this agent happened to be not so familiar with that area or with the property itself and failed to verify it further with the owner. This is a very important factor to me because it may sometimes be the sole deciding factor of if I should buy and how much maximum I'm willing to pay for it or not at all. Personally, I would favor freehold titled property, especially since I'm investing in a state of Penang. I do know that there are some hot areas in KL where most of the properties are of leasehold nature. So uh, in this instance, leasehold would not be a problem. Second, I will assert it if the land area and build up is correctly presented to me by the agent by verifying further on the title deed. This would affect the actual market value of the property. Third, I would then check who the neighbors are. If you could have a Chinese neighbor, it would always be an added bonus. Of course, this does not mean if the neighbors are non-Chinese, I would walk out from the deal, but I would price it down further a bit. Fourth, I would check on the surrounding of the property. I like to see if a housing estates are mostly occupied by local Malaysian and surrounded with amenities like uh, school, mini marts, banks, makan places, and etc. In fact, I'm looking out for signs of conducive and livable environment. Fourth, making the offer. If everything checked on the above, I would then find out on the latest transacted uh, prices of similar properties in the similar area in order to gauge how much I should be paying maximum for this property. There are various websites which we could access to such info. My top favourite is of course Bricks.Mine. Here are some other great places for you to get an insight on the property costs and trends. The first one is Property Guru Area Insider where it offers insight on sales data in targeted areas. And second, NAPIC or National Property Information Center which provides insight on national and regional trends. And third, Valuation and Property Services Department which gives you data on previous property transactions in the area. Once I have a guide on the latest transacted price and market value, I would then know how much to offer for the property. Fifth, signing letter of offer and paying earnest deposit. If the property is successfully secured, I would usually pay 1% earnest deposit to the agent and sign a letter of offer. For our info, usually I would ask the agent to get the property title ready to make sure we are dealing with the rightful owner and I would prefer to pay the owner's deposit directly to the agency. This way, I feel more secure knowing that the agency is holding my money as stakeholder and would do their own due diligence again before paying the earnest deposit to the rightful owner upon the owner signing on the letter of offer to indicate acceptance of our deal. Usually, seller would give buyer a period of minimum 40 working days or more from date of acceptance of this offer before signing of sales and purchase agreement or short form we call it SPA. I would also request to add in a clause for refund of earnest deposit should our loan be unsuccessful, which most seller would usually be agreeable to. Six. Mortgage loan application with letter of offer duly signed by both myself as a buyer and the owner as a seller. I would then proceed to submit our documents to our banker for loan application. Usually within two weeks, loan result would be out. Should you need longer time, inform the agent to get written consent from the seller for extension of time before executing the signing of SPA. In the market, generally, there are three types of mortgage loan available now, which is 
term loan, semi-flexi loan and full flexi loan. The type of mortgage loan I personally prefer to take upon, be it for own state purpose or for investment, are semi-flexi loan, as it offers both the advantages of a term and full flexi combined and I need not have to pay for the monthly Ringgit Malaysia $10 charges. If I were to opt for a full flexi loan, yet I could still pay down my loan principal any time when I have excess cash and still able to withdraw them out whenever I need it for emergency purpose. 7. Acceptance of our for mortgage loan Once you have decided on which mortgage loan and which bank you would want to take up the mortgage loan with, you would then have to sign to accept the loan offer from the respective bank and start to engage your own lawyer to help you in the purchase transaction. Since we have been investing into the property for so long, we do also have our regular law firm to help us out in this area. If you don't have one, you could always ask the property agent to help recommend a few uh, law firms and compare on the total charges and also the services rendered by these law firms. Once your loan is approved and you have signed on the letter of offer on which mortgage loan to take up with, your law firm would then proceed to start to prepare the SPA and loan agreement for your signing. 8. Signing of SPA and loan agreement When signing of SPA and loan agreement, you are required to pay off the balance 10% of down payment and other fees such as legal fees including MOT and agent fees. 9. Vacant possession Upon signing your SPA, for subsequent property, usually you would have to wait another 3 months plus 1 month if there is any delay before you finally getting the key and legal ownership to the property. If you are buying under construction property direct from developer, you would usually get the key to your property or some call it vacant possession or VP in short form within 36 months of signing the SPA for strata titled property and within 24 months for an individually titled property. Lastly, 10. Staging up of property. Upon getting the keys to the property, I would then contact our regular contractor to stage up the property if it is a rental property before we advertise to rent it out. If it is for own stay, of course, we would then have to engage an interior designer and work out the design and renovation to our liking but within our budget. So above are the simplified 10 steps I personally undertake each time when I plan to buy a property in Malaysia. What about you? Are there any extra steps you would do when you plan to buy a property in Malaysia? Feel free to share your tips with us here too. Thank you for watching this till the end. Hope you find this video helpful and remember to give a like to my video and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so and turn on the notification bell. And I shall see you again in my next video.